finding the critical value for a t distribution is different than finding it for a z distribution. You can find the critical value either by using a t chart or with technology. In this video, I'm going to go over how to find what t alpha over 2, the critical value, is using a TI-84 calculator. Typically, it cannot be done through a TI-83 as we need to use the program inverse t. That's what INV capital T means, inverse t. Uh, so unless you're downloading the program onto your 83, it's not going to come with it normally. But if you have an 84, it comes with it uh, automatically. So the only values you need to make it work are the area and the degrees of freedom. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So let's look at this first example here. Find the critical value T alpha over 2 corresponding to a 95% confidence level given that the sample size is 6. So this is easy. <clears throat> so the degrees of freedom, df, is n minus 1. So it's going to be 6 minus 1, which is going to be 5. So there's your degrees of freedom. Now you got to get the area. Now to get the area, what you're going to do is you're going to do 1 minus the confidence level, so 0.95. And that's going to give you, uh, let's see here, 0.05. Then you're going to take 0.05 and you're going to divide it by 2. And that's going to give you 0.025. So here's your degrees of freedom. Here is the area you want. And that's all you need. Now we can find the critical value very easily. So here is our calculator popping up. And what you do is you're going to go to second and vars. And you want to scroll down to INVT, number four, inverse T. Hit enter and you're gonna be prompted for the area and the degrees of freedom. So the area is the 0 0.025, 0 0.025, enter, the degrees of freedom are five, enter, enter, and then enter again. It's gonna think about it for a second, but you're gonna have a uh, T-score of negative 2.57058183. But with this, we don't need to do the whole number. You can use it if you, uh, need to, but you don't need to actually use it typically. We only need so much of it. First off, we can disregard the negative because you're supposed to do one minus a 0.025, but we're just gonna get the negative number and then just call it positive. So our T alpha over two value is going to be a positive 2.571. I'm just rounding to three decimals. That is how you find the critical value. <clears throat> That's it. How about for this one here? Find the critical value corresponding to 99% confidence level given the sample size is n equals 36. So again, the degrees of freedom, very easy to find, just 1 minus 36, or 36 minus 1, excuse me. That's going to give us 35. So there's our degrees of freedom. To find the area, it's going to be 1 minus 0.99, which is going to give us 0 0.01. And then 0 0.01 divided by 2, it's going to give us 0 0.005. So there's our area. And now, all the hard work is done. Just put it in the calculator. So second vars, number 4, area is going to be... 0.005. Our degrees of freedom are going to be 35 this time. Go down to paste. And again, you're going to see that we're going to get a negative number. We will disregard it. And I'm just going to round to th th three again. I think three decimals is good. So the T alpha over two value, 2.724. There is a critical value. Let's do one more example with a different confidence level again. We're going to find the critical value corresponding to a 98% confidence level given the sample size is n equals 19. So again, the degrees of freedom, very simple, very easy, one less than n. So 19 minus 1, which will give us 18 for the degrees of freedom. 
And then we're just going to do 1 minus 0 0.98 to give us 0 0.02. Make it look better. 0 0.02. And then 0 0.02 divided by 2 equals, what are you? 0 0.01. So there's the area. We have our degrees of freedom. Now we just plug everything in and get our answer. So 0 0.01, uh, 18 degrees of freedom. And we get a, again, a negative number, but that's fine. We just change it to a positive. So T alpha over two is gonna be 2.552. Again, just rounding to three decimal places. And the reason we divide by two is because it says it right there alpha over two, we get our alpha value, then we divide by two. So that's all we've been doing is taking our confidence level, turning it into an alpha value, take our alpha value, divide it by two, and that's our area. But we always want it to be positive because that's what the critical values are supposed to be. You're supposed to do another step, but I'm just skipping that step because it's just easier just to make it positive and we're done with it. And so I'm going to remove the calculator and just show a picture of all of it sitting in one. So this is how you find the critical values for a couple of different examples, but that's how you would do it for every single one is just find your alpha value, find your degrees of freedom, plug into a calculator, and then you are on your way and you either have the critical value if that's all you need, or you get the critical value and use it for whatever you may need, like margin of error or some confidence interval. And that is how you find the critical value T sub alpha over two using a T-I-D-4 calculator.